Yo, what is up guys? Today, we're gonna be breaking down a short form video that I made for myself or my Instagram. I'm gonna be giving you guys just a few tips and specifically like what I did in this video that keeps the viewers engaged. But I must say, if you guys are filming short form content, do not think too much about the edit. And if I were you, I wouldn't even be editing for three hours for one video. You can knock out five to 10 reels within the two hour span. As long as you're following these steps right here, it's pretty much a no brainer that you'll be able to get five to 10 videos done in two hours with this simple of a reel style. But anyways, we're gonna be working at DaVinci Resolve as you saw in the thumbnail and we're gonna hop into DaVinci Resolve right now, baby, let's get it. All right, so my short YouTube short was a tutorial style YouTube video. First things first I would do is, is obviously if you are a short form content editor, you would know that you would have it at this point by now. The thing that pops in your brain is creativity. That's the most frequently asked question that I get is, Ryan, how do you get so creative when you're watching your videos? Really, it's not even a creativity thing. It's just what would you like if you were watching the video? So put yourself in the viewer's shoes. I don't want it to be boring like the actual YouTube video. I want it to be quick and easy and I want to learn it in under 60 seconds, right? So the first thing that I did was my audio was filmed just through my camera and there's a bunch of background noise. So the very first thing I did was I brought my clip into Adobe Podcast AI. We're going to go there right now. I'm going to show you guys exactly what you need to do. All right, guys. So you search up podcast.adobe.com. You'll come to this website, it's actually completely free. Um, as of now, it's a beta, so I think in the future they're gonna make it paid, so just hop on this while you still have it. You're gonna come down here to the enhanced speech, you're gonna go to enhanced speech. Essentially, what you're gonna do is simply just drag your clip in here. So I drag my clip, now it says I have to just wait a few seconds and it'll give me the enhanced clip. Okay guys, so as you can see, my clip is done. It took around 30 seconds. So now that you can see here, we have a few options. So we can play our clip unenhanced. Here's exactly how you can create a 3D look. Not too good, right? Then we're gonna go to enhanced. We'll go rotation flip and DaVinci Resolve. Up here. Sounds 10 times better. And the best part is you can adjust your strength. So once you're done with that, you figure out what's good for you, download it, take it back into DaVinci Resolve. Clearly you are going to replace the audio clip that you previously had. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add all my zooms I want to add into this video, which is going to be a lot for this specific video, just since it's gonna be a YouTube tutorial. So this is my timeline after I added all my zoom ins that I want. Like I said, it's gonna be a lot since I'm doing a YouTube tutorial, but I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how I did it since I have it up here in my master bin so essentially what you do is you grab an adjustment clip and under that adjustment clip we're gonna come to our effects and we're gonna come and grab this magic zoom right here before you say anything I'm not selling you anything this is completely free you could get this in the link in the description it's called magic zoom it's actually completely free um, I'm not even affiliated with this guy I don't get any money if you decide to get this there's no money even being involved because it's completely free so go grab this it's a game changer um, this is what it does. Exactly how you can a 3D logo it does these crazy zooms that I just absolutely love. I use it in all my videos. So as you can see, that zoom it just did, that's Magic Zoom and it's completely free. So once you guys have Magic Zoom downloaded, I'm going to briefly go over it really quick. You guys are able to get a better understanding. So as you can see, I have Magic Zoom installed and now I have it on my clip. So to get to the effects, all you have to do is under the adjustment clip, come over here to the effects. Now we're going to play around with a few different settings. So you have mirror, Standard, zoom and hold, or zoom or hold and zoom out. So I prefer mirror. Exactly how you so as you can see, it's already looking good just as the default. After you open a new pod but you know, right there, it kind of cuts off a little too early. So we're gonna cut it right there. And then also this right here, just kind of adjust it with where we want it. But for this one, it's gonna be different, right? So we want it to zoom in over here. And what's great about this is it actually focals that point because it automatically knows like where you're tracking it. So it'll also like mainly focus that and kind of blur everything out in the background. Only editors will notice it. So I'm just gonna duplicate this over by holding option and dragging over on my keyboard. So as you can see, I'm just gonna resize it to this clip because this is how I wanted it. We're gonna go to But if we deselect this, you can see the difference. It kind of just zooms in, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna come to the effects again, come to the zoom scale and zoom in a little bit. Now this is the game changer. Under this drop down arrow, you're gonna drop down. You're gonna come to fusion overlay. You're gonna get this little X. You're gonna hold over it until you get a white X. Now you're gonna drag that to exactly where you want it. Okay, this is key. So now, instead of it being there, now it could be all the way down here. Okay, so now we have a zoom that zooms in to our effects, right? And then it zooms right back out. Then once you're done putting all your zooms in, playing around with magic zoom, now you should have all your zooms in your timeline. Now we're gonna get into the visual side effects of things. So as you can see here, I'm talking about a 3D logo animation. So they need to see what they're gonna be learning before they even wanna watch my video, right? So right as I say, what create this 3D, that's where I'm gonna place my B-roll. As you can see here, 
Now I have the 3D logo rotation and I just have it to where my clip, my next clip starts. So now I'm gonna just spice it up a little bit and add some transitions. A transition I use very frequently in DaVinci Resolve is actually in DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna come over to the video transitions and it's literally so easy. It's called a brightness flash. So we're just gonna drag this over our clip. We don't want it too much. So we're just gonna drag it down to make it look realistic. And then next thing you know, this is what it looks like. Create a 3D. So right, Create a 3D look. so you're probably like, what? That doesn't look good. With a simple sound effect, you're able to create something crazy. So I have my sound effect pack right here. I'm gonna drag this in and then this is now, now this is what it sounds like with just one sound effect. You can create a 3D logo. Crazy, sounds amazing. So since I'm not crazy into um, too much effects, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. You could always change it up yourself. But I'm literally just gonna do the same thing and always hold option and just drag this back out. After you open a new project. Boom, just like After that. And then also another option you guys can do is always a film burn. Um, this is a film burn pack that I have. His name is Creative Ryan, he's absolutely insane. This is another option you could do. So say you didn't like the camera flash, you always do a film burn. So now that you see here, we have this exactly film burn. How you can create a 3D logo rotation flip in DaVinci Resolve. So if I have those film burns, I'm not using these sound effects. What I'm gonna use is this for my essential sound effect pack and then this cam snap. But now it'll sound something like this. Create a 3D logo and then literally highlight that and copy it on over here. Rotation flip in DaVinci Resolve. After you open it. Boom, just like that. So in the middle of my video, obviously it's just the tutorial. I'm gonna do some things later on in the video, help the video stay active. But essentially I'm just gonna come to the end here and kind of do, as my CTA, I'm gonna make it more interesting that they're gonna stay and watch my CTA. So I gotta keep them engaged at the end. So we're gonna ice it up a little bit at the end. I'm gonna show you guys my workflow. So right here, I'm saying there's a full in-depth tutorial on my YouTube right now. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my effects and a lot of these things are pre-built effects. So I have this YouTube overlay. So essentially I'm just gonna turn the size down so you guys can see it as a YouTube short. And then we're gonna come into the fusion under the media one, hit shift space and get a Delta keyer. We're gonna key out the green and then turn up this balance so that we don't have any green edges. And then now we have something like this. So as you can see, it comes out a little bit right there and we don't want it, so we're just gonna drag this down to where it hits the bottom, just like that. Full in-depth tutorial on my YouTube right now. Over 3D, and I'll personally send it to you. So that ends there, so I don't have to worry about any of that, so we're just gonna end it there. So I say comment the word 3D. I kinda wanna put that text in bold so that they can clear as day see that that's what they need to comment. So what I'm gonna essentially do here is I'm gonna duplicate my video. By doing that, I'm just gonna hold option and scroll up. So now I'm gonna pull this up to the top of our timeline right here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm hovering over this and we're gonna go into the color tab. So here, I'm gonna simply add another node. I'm gonna add a corrector and we're gonna add it to this right here. This is my whole color grade for my video. So ignore that, but you will need to add a new node because it will mess up any other color grade that you did. Now we're gonna come over to magic mask right here. If you don't know what that is, you need the studio version for that. And we're gonna come to this plus bar right here and we're gonna hit better and then tag on this button right here. So I'm just gonna draw out me. When you tend to use better, your computer can start slowing down a little bit, but that's no big deal because you want it to look as best as possible and it'll maybe be another minute. So as you can see, there is too much in the red. That's why selecting this button is essential. So I'm just gonna drag this actually right here and just make sure that all that's not good and then we're gonna come track back and forth right here. Okay, so once you're done, you don't wanna forget a key essential part is coming down here and adding an alpha output. This will connect this green input. You're just gonna basically connect the dots. Super simple. And now you have two of you. But next, I'm gonna come and drag this text that I got from my free editing sauce community. Um, it's down in the link in the description again. Um, it's just a free community full of like-minded editors just like you and me. Um, join down below, you can get crazy free stuff. Um, I got this text, some guy just gave it to me, so shout out to him. But uh, I'll show you guys the workflow on this. You guys can just copy this right here um, and use it all you want. But uh, this is what I'm using right now. I did not make this text, I cannot take full credit. But essentially what I'm gonna do is just hit 3D and I'm gonna emphasize it. Um, and I'm gonna see if that's any good, if that'll be good. Um, that might be a little too big. That should be good. We're gonna come back to the Fusion page and under this transform, I'm gonna add another transform. I'm gonna come all the way to zero, bring this completely down to where you can't see it, set a keyframe, come up about 15 frames, 
and go back to 0.5. This will animate it up. Um, and then to make it way better, we're gonna hit motion blur, come to the spline, and then we're gonna check mark transform two. And then we're gonna hit this button. This will zoom to fit the every the, both the keyframes. You're gonna click and drag all of these. That'll highlight both the points. And then you'll hit S on your keyboard to smooth this out. And then I'm just gonna drag this down like this to smooth out my frames. So now as you can see, you have that cool effect. Um, and then it kind of just sits there, right? Um, and I don't really like how that does that. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep the same transform node because I like the way it looks. And under transform two, I'm gonna add transform three and we're gonna hit another keyframe at the end. Then we're gonna come back to the end of our clip and animate it back down. But a key essential thing, un unselect that, make sure you only have the transform three connected and essentially it's just the same thing here. We're just gonna do that. And then also don't forget motion blur on that one. So now that you can see, we have the text that animates behind us, but something that I don't like is it kind of just sits there. I know it's an animated text, but I don't like how that looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to our effects and like I said, magic zoom can be used on anything. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hit magic zoom on this to ice it up a little bit. And under the effects, I'm literally just gonna keep zoom and hold to keep it better. And I'm actually just gonna bring this down to 0 0.1. I don't want it zooming in too much. And then this is the sauce. Under camera shake, we're gonna bring this motion scale up quite a few and then the speed scale. Also, I have so many people ask me about my specs on my computer. And essentially what I do if it gets slow like it is now because I'm screen recording and doing this effect, um, it's really not that much, but I've been editing for a little while, so it's getting a little hot. So under the playback, under the tabs, we're gonna come to proxy timeline resolution, and I'm just gonna hit it at quarter. Now, a downside to this is you probably won't be able to see your footage as great, but you'll be able to work 10 times smoother than you were before. So I'm just gonna go through and make it more entertaining by adding film burns. This is something I like to use frequently in my videos. So a really cool effect I like to do. I have this transition right here. See how it's, it's only a few seconds long. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click it come under the composite mode and then we're just gonna change this to screen. But now that you're able to see through our clip, so now I'm just gonna essentially slit this in half. So for the first half, I'm gonna bring it over to the right. For the second half, I'm gonna bring it to the front of my clip and we're gonna leave it there. So then for the second half, we're gonna drag it all the way down to the last seconds of my clip and we're gonna place it right above everything. So now it'll almost be like a transition if they end up repeating the video. So then you guys can see my timeline sound effects um, essentially what I did was I added some sound effects, obviously like when I do the vert transitions, uh, the like this this burn film, exactly. I used a transition there and then for this one, you can a 3D obviously I used a transition there and then this is just called a riser and it and it's it's like a, a suspense build up so, so this is essential. I would use risers in like every one of your short form content, it's game changing. Um, so anything that's leading up to something big, it's like, and then your video starts. Like it's super cool effect that you could do. Um, and then I simply just added music. So now it's kind of just like, and then the music starts. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's, it's like anyone should use this effect, right? Um, again, at the end, I do another riser to end the video off. The last thing is captions. I do captions very dead last because it's not something that I'm big into, honestly. Um, I kind of just throw the captions on there. Now, I know there's people who do crazy caption effects, um, and I can still do those caption effects. Let me know down below if you guys want me to do a YouTube tutorial on that, but I'm not big into them for my videos specifically. Right, so I have a few different text effects. I'm gonna go over them really quickly for you guys so that you're able to learn and use these text effects. So as you can see on the screen, this is my first text effect. Super cool effect. It has an outline and then as well as a shadow, but it doesn't really look like a shadow. So first thing you need to do is under the transform, under the shading, you need to come to two and enable your black outline. Turn the thickness all the way up and make sure your color's at black. Come to the fusion page and I add a glow and then a drop shadow. You guys can mess with those settings however you want, but that is the first text effect. All right, so this is my next one right here. It's actually way simpler than you think. Um, my text font that I'm using is Railway, but essentially it's literally just that, a glow, a soft glow, and a drop shadow. Super simple. Um, and then for this last one, it is a bit more tricky. Um, like I showed you guys before in the earlier stage, um, this is the this is the node graph for this. I have no idea how that guy in my community did it. Um, that guy's a G, but uh, you guys can just copy these settings right here. Um, I have no idea how he did it. But. And then this is the last one that I made. Um, it's, it has a really cool effect. So as you can see, I'm using Railway again. Okay, so with that being said, I made all those presets except for one. 
So now we're gonna get into how I actually do them. So over this timeline right here, we're gonna click create subtitles. I'm gonna put it at 10 and we're gonna let it do its justice. Okay, so as you guys can see here, my subtitles have auto-generated, but they're really whack. It's the basic text and it's just at the bottom, as you can see here. So we're gonna spice this up, okay? So there's this guy, he created this free plugin called Snap Captions. And yes, guys, all everything that I use is plugins and most of them are free. So you guys gotta get on the way for plugins. You can't keep using in DaVinci Resolve software things. You have to get plugins to enhance your editing. Essentially, what we're gonna do is I have you installed Snap Captions. Um, so that's what this is for. Those are all those text presets. So it will basically plop those texts on there for me. Um, so I don't have to go and manually place it. So under the workspaces, I'm gonna come to scripts, comp, and I have a bunch of presets. So I'm just gonna come to snap captions. So it's super simple. I'm gonna click the one that I want. Under the case, I'm gonna do two uppercase. I'm gonna remove punctuation and generate it. And it'll do all the work for me. And after this, I'm done, I can export it, and now I'm good to post it on social media. That's how easy my captions are. So guys, that is how I create my reels. Um, it's super simple. I know this video is a banger, and I hope you guys learned something. Honestly, don't forget to join the free community down below. Um, I'm building a massive community. There's over like 250 members right now. Anyways, guys, it's been real. Um, until next time, my YouTube channel is growing rapidly, and I'm not gonna stop. So let's get it, guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. Um, join the Discord. Peace out, guys. Thank you.